November also brought about Survivors, the BBC's reimagining of Terry Nation's mid-70s series of the same name. And it's exactly like the original in every way, apart from the casting, pace, execution and overall tone. The story takes place in a contemporary Britain that's been afflicted by a deadly flu-like pandemic that suddenly renders people lazy. So lazy they couldn't even be bothered to breathe and would rather lie around looking floppy and frightening people. Actually, the show couldn't quite make up its mind how the disease worked because some people got sick and sweaty and deteriorated slowly, while others looked perfectly healthy until the final moment when some kind of invisible deadline kicked in and they all died together in serene solidarity. See, say what you like about us British, we're punctual and we're clean. None of this shitting out our internal organs in a screaming, blubbering heap for us. No, we just laid down and died in neat piles. I bet France was a f***ing toilet. As you've just seen, not everyone died, which is just as well, because otherwise the series would have starred two cockroaches and a deer or something. One percent of the population survived the bug, although not without suffering a few curious side effects. Max Beasley's character, for instance, was left with a sort of intense brooding squint, which kicked in every five minutes, leaving him unable to talk. While Zoe Tapper's Dr. Thingamajig had her entire personality wiped out by the virus. Worst of all, Julie Graham, playing Abby Grant, suffered some kind of bizarre mental damage, which turned her into an irritating, huffy mum figure who kept whining on and on and on about going to find her poxy son, Peter, who we'd never actually seen, so we didn't give a toss about. I have to find Peter now. Peter! Peter! I'm looking for my son, Peter. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I saw him a second ago. He was heading that way, somewhere off the screen somewhere. Why don't you go and look for him? I sometimes know when I think of Peter. I can't remember his face. Oh, good start. Now work on forgetting his f***ing name. Anyway, Abby and Co are strikingly middle-class survivors. The virus has largely wiped out Britain's working classes, apart from one or two who've been turned into implausible villains. Sort of chavs from hell. What are we having? <laughs> We came back because we like you. Lenny really likes you. You go first, then I'll join you. Anyway, with most of Britain's bin men and bus drivers lying inconveniently dead and the rest gone feral, the entire infrastructure has collapsed, which means our middle class survivors quickly learn they'll have to go all rain mears to survive. We're going to have to relearn the skills we've forgotten. We've become like helpless babies. Pushing the buttons of our fancy technology whilst distancing ourselves further every day from the reality of what it actually is to be human. Huh? Anyway, as the series progressed, it settled into a sort of half-good, half-bad groove. On the one hand, there was lots of agreeably bleak post-apocalyptic horridness to enjoy. And on the other, there were regular concessions to regulation BBC cosy chummy niceness, which sometimes left the band of survivors looking more like the f***ing Oxo family.